On April 2nd, 2008, a 22-year-old from Melbourne, Australia, vanished in the dark of night under very murky and mysterious circumstances. Despite numerous lingering questions, this perplexing case has garnered very little media attention. Described by a friend as a gorgeous girl with an infectious laugh and a caring, kindest, most trusting nature, Ji Wan Chong, affectionately known as Sally Chong, was cherished deeply by her family and friends. A passionate shutterbug, she found joy in capturing candid moments through her lens. Despite her popularity and willingness to aid those in need, Sally was known for her timidity, often keeping her opinions and much of her personal life discreet, particularly in the realm of relationships. Despite this secrecy, she played a pivotal role as a translator for her family and was looked up to by her siblings. In the suburban landscape of Melbourne, Sally's formative years unfolded in a bustling household of nine, encompassing her parents, grandparents and four younger siblings, Helen, Anna, Andrew and Wendy. Described by her sister Helen, their upbringing followed a familiar pattern, with parents who instilled the values of hard work, active participation in the family's Asian food wholesale business and a deep-seated respect for their elders. During her teenage years, Sally pursued her education at the Presbyterian Ladies' College in nearby Burwood, later venturing into the realm of computer science at university. In 2007, post-graduation, Sally embarked on a year-long journey to Beijing, China, primarily driven by the aspiration to enhance her language proficiency and forge new connections. Despite being deeply tied to her birthplace, Sally returned to Australia in early 2008, and her demeanour, according to her loved ones, underwent a subtle transformation. Helen, her sister, shared with the media that Sally had expressed an unusual desire for more freedom, a departure from her usual role as a family-oriented homebody. Having just returned from experiencing a different country, it's conceivable that Sally, fueled by her time in China, yearned to explore more of the world beyond the familiar confines of the Melbourne suburbs where she grew up. Notably, reports surfaced about Sally's undisclosed relationship during her gap year in China. Despite the Chong family possessing photos of Sally with her partner, little was known about him. This revelation underscores Sally's penchant for keeping much of her life private and raises the intriguing possibility that she may have harboured a desire to carve out a life beyond the confines of her Melbourne suburban upbringing. In 2008, at the age of 22, Sally found herself employed in the family business, a pragmatic choice to sustain herself as opportunities in her field of computer science were elusive at the time. Residing at her family home on Moresby Street in Oakley South, Victoria, Sally navigated the intricacies of balancing work and home life. On the 1st of April 2008, Sally spent the day engaged in family activities, playing tennis and sharing dinner with her loved ones. She retired to her room earlier than usual, around 9pm, after what seemed to be a remarkably ordinary day with no apparent concerns on her mind. At around 10pm, Sally's father, returning from a business trip to Adelaide, quietly entered her room to leave the keys to the family's cargo van. However, at this hour, approximately 11pm, Sally was already asleep. Her father, noticing the unusual circumstance that her door was shut, found it noteworthy as Sally typically left her door slightly ajar, mirroring the nighttime routine of all the children in the household. In the early hours of April 2nd, around 3am, Wendy Chong, Sally's 14-year-old sister, was immersed in a late-night MSN chat with her boyfriend when she detected an unusual noise. Initially attributing it to their mother, Wendy feigned sleep to avoid any potential repercussions for being up so late. However, after a few moments, curiosity got the better of her, 
prompting Wendy to check the hallway outside her room. To her surprise, she encountered a dark silhouette, a mysterious figure lingering near her sister Helen's room before moving towards Sally's bedroom. Intriguingly, Wendy then caught the murmur of a man's low voice, a simple utterance of the word, yeah. Assuming it was Sally's boyfriend, a familiar visitor during the early hours, someone Sally had met after her return from China, a former schoolmate now working as a doctor, Wendy dismissed any further concern. Subsequently, she observed Sally walking down the hall, presumably returning from the bathroom. With this, Wendy returned to bed and drifted off to sleep around 3.30am, unaware that this would be the last time she saw her sister alive. Later that morning, around 7.30am, Sally's father arose for work as part of his routine, only to be confronted by an unusual sight just outside his bedroom door. On the floor lay the keys to his BMW and the keys to his business premises. His immediate assumption was that Sally had left them there, as she would have been the last person to have used the keys. Believing she was still asleep, he presumed nothing out of the ordinary at that moment. Around 9am, Andrew, Sally's brother, received a call instructing him to request Sally to bring their father's mobile phone to work in Keysborough, as he had forgotten it. However, upon searching the house, Andrew couldn't locate his sister and assumed that she had already left for work. Andrew then passed the responsibility to his sister, Anna, who proceeded to text Helen to inquire about Sally's whereabouts. Helen, unaware of Sally's location, presumed she might be with her boyfriend. Around 1pm, the Chong family came to the unsettling realisation that nobody had seen or heard from Sally since the previous night, including her boyfriend, who confirmed he hadn't been with her and hadn't received any communication from her that day. Sally's absence at her workplace, a significant departure from her routine, raised a red flag for her family. It's worth noting that Melbourne residents were grappling with the aftermath of a severe windstorm wreaking havoc across the city, potentially affecting Sally's commute to work. Despite their growing concern, Sally's parents faced a bureaucratic hurdle at the police station. Regulations prevented them from officially reporting Sally as missing until 24 hours had elapsed. This delay added to the family's distress as they grappled with the mysterious disappearance of young Sally. In an anxious state of waiting, Sally's family undertook a thorough search of her bedroom, hoping to find any potential clues to her whereabouts. They meticulously examined her belongings, accessed her Facebook account and reached out to her close friends those with whom she often spent time, in an attempt to glean any information about her recent activities. Unfortunately, their efforts yielded no results. Driven by their mounting concern, the family extended their search beyond the home, driving through the neighbourhood in hopes of finding any trace of the 22-year-old. Despite their exhaustive efforts, there was still no sign of Sally, intensifying the mystery surrounding her disappearance. Extensive police and forensic investigations delved into every corner of the Chong residence, yet no significant clues emerged to shed light on Sally's disappearance. The thorough search yielded no traces of blood or indications of a struggle within the premises. However, Sally's family did manage to ascertain that she had taken her wallet, phone, iPod, car keys and a distinctive blue security blanket, a rather unusual item to bring along, according to her sister. This blanket held sentimental value for Sally, having been a cherished possession since childhood. Notably, despite taking her car keys, Sally did not take her car, passport or camera, items she typically carried everywhere. An intriguing detail emerged when Helen informed authorities that Sally's mobile phone and the landline in her room had rung several times the night before her disappearance, specifically between 10.30 and 11pm. Strikingly, 
all calls went unanswered, including those from her boyfriend who was returning an earlier call from Sally. The reasons behind Sally's lack of response remains a perplexing mystery. On March the 3rd, 2008, less than a month before her disappearance, police discovered a concerning email conversation between Sally and a male friend. In the correspondence, she shared a startling detail with detectives, expressing a fear for her life. She conveyed to this male friend, quote, I'm afraid you gun me down or get angry, revealing a deep-seated fear that this individual might resort to violence, including the possibility of shooting her. Police diligently interviewed the male individual mentioned, along with two other males identified in various sources as Sally's ex-boyfriends. Despite initial suspicions, all three were ruled out as suspects due to their solid alibis and the outcomes of polygraph tests. It's important to note that while polygraph tests are not admissible as evidence in court, they were instrumental in eliminating these individuals from this list of potential suspects. Detectives went to great lengths, travelling across Australia to question associates and connections of Sally's, hoping to uncover any leads or information that could provide insight into her vanishing. Unfortunately, these efforts did not yield any significant findings. The media reports on this case do not provide clear information about whether the police positively identified the male individual present in the Chong residence on the night Sally disappeared. Sally's trusting nature, as described by friends, adds a layer of complexity to the investigation. Some friends believed that Sally, in her trusting demeanour, tended to give everyone she met the benefit of the doubt. It's plausible that Sally, known for her openness, may have encountered someone during her travels whom she befriended, but who harboured ill intentions. Her confidences to a female friend revealed a nuanced emotional landscape, expressing a constant need for a boyfriend. Despite her positive feelings for the Melbourne doctor she was dating, Sally admitted to still harbouring emotions for a love interest back in China. These emotional complexities may have played a role in her interactions and relationships, adding further intricacy to the investigation into her disappearance. The initial belief held by Sally's family, considering the possibility that she may have run away, has been clouded by the lack of any contact from her since her disappearance. Notably, there has been no activity in her bank account since that time, and her phone, a crucial link to her daily life, has remained untouched. An intriguing detail emerges concerning her phone, which was switched off around 11am on the day she vanished. Prior to having been turned off, several attempts were made to contact her, resulting in strange crackling noises rather than hearing a human voice. The fate of Sally, who was on the brink of turning 23 when she disappeared, remains shrouded in uncertainty. Despite the exhaustive efforts of her parents, including hiring private investigators and consulting psychics who offered conflicting insights, no concrete leads have emerged. Some psychics suggested that Sally was alive and residing in China, even though she didn't take her passport, leading to speculation about the possibility of obtaining fake identification. The fact that Sally took her security blanket with her raises the likelihood that she may have left willingly, possibly with assistance from someone else. However, the truth behind her disappearance remains elusive. Sally's passing comment about the strict curfews imposed by her parents hints at potential tensions and a desire for more freedom. It raises the possibility that her need for independence was more profound than a passing thought, suggesting that she might have been deeply unhappy and in desperate need of a significant change in her life. The Chong family, like many in Asian cultures, had a dynamic where the eldest sibling often assumed a third parental role, a responsibility that might not have been to Sally's liking. 
With her parents heavily involved in their work, Sally found herself spending a significant amount of time caring for her younger sisters and brother. She took on various parental duties, from driving her siblings to and from after-school activities to organising their tuition. She even played a role in getting them dressed in the morning and ready for bed most nights. This level of responsibility and expectations associated with meeting her parents' standards could have placed immense pressure on Sally. The idea of fulfilling the role of a parental figure to her siblings, coupled with striving to excel in every aspect of her life, might have become overwhelming. Helen, Sally's sister, shared with one source that whenever she and her siblings needed something, their mother's frequent response was simply, ask Sally. The enduring mystery surrounding Sally Chong's disappearance, now 15 years unresolved, leaves authorities and her family grappling with various possibilities. The lack of significant leads has kept the case in a state of ambiguity. The uncertainties persist as to whether Sally chose to disappear voluntarily, seeking a new life, or if she met with a tragic fate. The passage of time adds complexity to the investigation, and despite ongoing efforts, the circumstances surrounding Sally's vanishing remain elusive. The Chong family, as well as those involved in the search for answers, continue to endure the heartache of not knowing what transpired on that fateful night. When she disappeared in April of 2008, Sally Chong was 22 years old. She is described as being of Asian origin, specifically Chinese, with a tanned complexion. She is of a slim build, standing at 5 feet 3 inches tall. She had long brown hair and brown eyes. Unfortunately, it's unknown what Sally was last seen wearing. Due to the circumstances involved, Sally Chong is classed as an endangered missing person. Those with any information regarding the disappearance of Sally Chong are urged to contact Australian Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000.